Hey everyone, I'm Janelle, and today I'm gonna show you how to weave checkerboard on a frame loom. So let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you're about to weave a checkerboard is figure out how many checkers that you actually want on your piece. I'm going to be doing three checkers wide and three checkers tall. So I have warped on my loom 30 warp strings. It's a four ends per inch loom. So each checker is going to be 10 warp strings wide. For the weft, I'm going to be using two colors of this plied yarn. One of them I believe is Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick and the other is Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. I will put a list of the materials in the description box below as well for you. I'm gonna start with this sort of orangey, almost terracotta kind of color. As usual, I have to unknot it before I start. Why does this always happen? What? So I've grabbed about an arm and a half for my length of yarn. I'm gonna have a better idea after I weave the first checker of how much yarn I actually need for each checker. And we're gonna start out sort of in the middle so that our ends aren't on the edge. That's just gonna make our lives a little easier later. So again, I'm working on 10 strings at a time. So I'm going to be going around these 10 at the edge and I'm just using plain weave, which is just over one warp string, under one warp string. I'm gonna tuck this end back in there. And I'm just going to be weaving plain weave back and forth across these 10 strings until I have a length that is equal to the width. The biggest thing here is you wanna make sure that this warp string isn't getting too, too far from this one. So definitely utilize the arch when you do your plain weave. So I'm pulling that snug against that string, creating a little arch. You can even strum it a little bit and then beating it down. I'm going to beat down each row, just needed to adjust that one, quite firmly because I don't want a lot of the warp strings to show. Now I have my first little checker finished. And so now when we go to the next checkers, I can simply just count how many rows I wove in the first one and use that for all the others, which is gonna make it a little bit quicker. To end off this little checker here, I am going to sort of let that lift up and I'm gonna loop this back around like so, just so that it, it ends with the end just more tucked behind and not finishing off on the under. So I'm gonna leave myself a tail and I had almost exactly the right amount of yarn. So I think just one arm's length in my case would have been enough yarn. Then I'm gonna grab my next color. Now you can do this in a couple different ways. You can either weave your checkers one, two, three like this, or you can weave them stacked up on each other first and then go to the next row and the next row. It's, it really doesn't matter which way you do it because we're not attaching them till the end. So in my case, I'm going to keep weaving 20 rows of plain weave for each checker. For this last checker, I'm actually gonna keep starting on the right side for it as well. Even though it's not on the inside, I wanna make sure that all our plain weave rows are starting and ending the same. I just finished 20 rows on this last one, but it's not lining up with the other. So that means I beat it down too tightly. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go with my fingers and sort of like loosen it up a bit so that it meets with the other two rows a little bit better. So no harm done. I'm gonna try to even that out with my fingers just to sort of, you know, make sure that it doesn't look uneven or anything like that and then finish it off the same way as the others. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start with the off-white yarn because I wanna stagger those checkers so it looks like checkerboard. So in the end, we'll end up with three columns that are separate and we'll connect them when we're all finished with the weaving. I'm on the last row of the checkers, so I'm going to go back to the orange for each side and then the off-white in the middle. Yeah. 
So I'm finished weaving all the checkerboard, but now we have to do all the finishing to make it actually look nice and pretty and finished. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm taking the off-white yarn and I'm going to just do a twining stitch at the top of the piece. And I'm really letting these columns come together as I'm doing that twining. I want them to come together because we have to attach them after anyway. All right, we're ready to flip over the loom and start finishing the back to make it nice. So we've got quite a mess back here. And I'm gonna take all this painter's tape off of the back of my loom. It's something I like to use to just secure it to the table so it's not sliding around on me. I really like weaving on the flat because my arms and shoulders get really sore if I'm weaving with my arms out in front of me. I'm grabbing my little yarn needle and I'm gonna start tucking in all of these ends. We wanna do that before we start attaching everything together. And to tuck in these ends, it's super, super simple. So you just thread your needle and we're gonna just go through some of the weft channels in the back. Three like so is totally enough. Pull it through, cut off the excess, and then do that exact same process for all of the ends. Now that all the ends are tucked in, we're ready to start sewing together these columns so that it looks like one continuous piece with perfect lines. So I'm using some of my warp string. This is 4-8 natural cotton, and I'm basically just going to take a length of it, and we're gonna start sewing these columns together. I'm gonna just use my little plastic yarn needle for this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm starting in between the wefts. So I have one weft down here on the orange and one here on the off-white. I'm going to pick up only the warp string, like so. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're going to bring that through and then I'm going to tie this in a knot and we can tuck in the ends after and I'm pulling it pretty tight because I want these to sit close together. So then I'm gonna go up to the next two wefts, again grabbing only the warp string. We don't wanna grab any of the yarn. And we're gonna pull that tight and then I'm going to the next wefts. And so we're basically just sewing the columns together and I'll show you the front in a second because we do wanna make sure that the front looks fairly seamless as well. So as you can see in the front, you can see the warp string a tiny bit through the orange because it's orange, but it hides pretty well there and we're gonna just keep going up that way. So now I'm at the top and I'm going to just grab one um, warp string here and I'm just gonna tie a knot again. Loop that around, tie a knot. Then with the ends, we can simply do the same way that we tucked in the other wefts. I'm gonna go in the off-white since this is off-white. I'll just hide a little bit better. Now that everything's sewn together, all the ends are tucked in, let's flip this over so that we can reveal this really nice, clean checkerboard. I love this technique for this exact reason. It's so crisp and clean. We have super straight lines and it looks awesome. Check out this video next for another checkerboard woven wall hanging.